stuff. Welcome everybody. Today we're here with Tyler Voorhees for episode three of the Spencer Covey Show, filming live from his home. <laughs> here we are. And uh, we've got it all set up and we forgot our ferns, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so Tyler, I was doing a little bit of research before I came over here. Really? And yes, and I, I learned that you kind of found your stride in Germany. Uh, travel is, is just part of who I am and, and uh, what I love. And so looking back, I can see that time abroad as so foundational and such a big pivot moment in my life and, and my wife and I's lives. Um, yeah, so we were, a little backstory, you know, we grew up in South Dakota, pretty rural. Mm -hmm. Um, knew there was a bigger world out there and uh, always knew like that, that's for me. Like I'm going to explore and I go out and see what's out there. And so after meeting her in college, um, you know, kind of got to know each other, but nothing too serious. And then she got a job in Germany and, uh, got a job with the government, like a, a year long contract in Southern Germany. And I was fresh out of college. I like this girl. I'm like. Uh, I'm going, yeah. yeah. So that's the story. Saved up some money, went uh, and moved to Munich. Um, so it was 2000, 2008. And then spent the next two years with Ashley in, in Europe, just exploring and um, just opening my eyes, you know. Yeah. Like when you travel, it's just, it's, it's like taking a big breath in of like new experiences. Um, especially if you've been to Europe, you know what I'm talking about, just the the pace of life and the history. So yeah, Europe was absolutely foundational to uh, the development of my art and me as a person. Mm -hmm. um, so what was an average day like? Were you like by a river with your paintbrush <laughs> you know, on easel? Was it that idyllic? Oh or? gosh, that, that, no, it was much more of a, a blue collar, um, you know, shoestring budget kind of existence where I, I had to find a job before I moved there because I had enough money to get there, but I needed to make mm -hmm. income. So um, I got a job giving bike tours around the city of Munich oh, uh, to English tourists, English speaking tourists. Oh, rickshaw? What was that called? Um, no, it was, bike? we all had fat tire bikes. Oh. And Munich's a very like bike friendly city and it's full of history. Um, but I flew in, you know, showed up and started training right away, like learning the history and how the tours go and everything. And on day three, I was in Munich, I'm giving my first tour, <laughs> you know, talking to these people as if I'm an expert. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm yeah. new here, but I was just trying to fake it, fake it till you make it kind of a deal. Mm -hmm. um, but in the evenings, you know, my, my uh, then girlfriend was yeah. living south, like about an hour. Oh. Yeah, so I'd see her on the weekends. For the, so you moved to Germany, but we're at the same town? I was close. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was yeah. like, I'm a lot closer yeah. than, you know, South Dakota, Germany, Munich. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So, so basically, I did have a lot of free time to explore during the week. And on the weekends, we'd get together and go on our adventures. But um, I would work all day. I'd give like two bike tours during the day and, and be out there in the main square, like kind of hawking the tourists. And, <laughs> yeah. And then in the evening, I was I was staying above this old Bavarian couple's. I was in the upper floor of their home. Uh -huh. I was staying in this upper like room with a bed with a bathroom, and um, I you know go out in the city or I just stay home and, and paint. That's that's a great story. It was uh, absolutely amazing, and yeah, so like I said, so eye opening. It just I, I've never been the same. And I would say you know knowing you a little bit that you're. Um, travel continues to be a big part of your, um, I guess, how you call it, art practice. Is that probably fair to say? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, most artists that would agree that, like, you draw from your life experiences mm -hmm. to create your art. And and that's and part of the magic of it is you don't really have control of what comes out. <laughs> yes, but right. you can find what, you know, works with putting in, you know, and what helps you find that inspiration. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so Ashley and I just love to travel. I mean, that's like the zest of life for us. So yeah. we continue to travel as much as we can. Um, we went to, and with the, with the art business we've started, we've been able to travel abroad a few times and, and 
it's been great to see those doors open. Yeah, most recently was um, South America for a big mural. Uh, Mexico. Mexico. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so we went to, I wish it was South, that sounds great. Oh, I, yeah. A little, yeah, a little, a little more light, yeah. but yeah. yeah, we went to uh, this town called Acumal, um, it's south of Cancun, and okay. it's just this awesome little town that, um, it's been mainly like touristy, you know, tourist destination, but what they've done is they've built up this whole mural festival. Let's say the name one more time. Acumal. Okay. Yeah, I'm probably butchering it. Oh, no, no, I'm sure you're getting close. Um, it's close to Tulum, and it's kind of in that old, like, Mayan ruins area, like the Riviera Maya. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, they, they invited us there to come paint a mural. And this little town, I mean, it's probably only a couple thousand, three thousand people with a bunch of resorts on the bay. Um, they have over 300 murals. Yeah, I was, I was looking at some of the pictures you posted. It was, uh, it was very impressive. It was uh, it was incredible, and um, we were just so fortunate to go there. Um, yeah, there was a. I mean, I I'm a big fan of of looking back and seeing how things just line up perfectly. Mm -hmm. And um, we went there and painted this this character we've been uh, developing called the Lamplighter, mm -hmm. who is is a historical figure. You know the the jobs of the past. I study that in my work, and so it connects to that. But it's become this symbol and this, this symbol for like a way of life for us. And, and the lamplighter specifically. The lamplighter specifically, yeah. Because, you know, what he did in his work, he would light the lamps, he would illuminate darkness, he would bring light wherever he went. Mm -hmm. And so we really have come to realize that that's our mantra for life, is bringing light into the world through our art and through our works and through, you know, uh, what we do with our time and our energy. So the lamplighter's here to stay. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, and so in Acumal, um, we, the, the festival was canceled um, because of, of COVID, but we had already planned this trip and we just wanted to get out of Michigan during the winter. And we thought, let's just ride them and see if they'll let us paint a mural, even though, you know, the mural festival isn't going. Mm -hmm. And so um, we rode them and, you know, one thing led to another and they found us this great prominent wall there and we came and we we painted this lamplighter and afterwards uh we spoke to the lady who started the whole festival and she i mean she was tearing up as she's telling us the story but she started the whole festival because um she owns this little restaurant there and it was really dangerous for her workers to walk home at night and so she started getting involved with the city to illuminate that walk home for them over this overpass and so that eventually led to her getting more involved with the city and thinking of ways to beautify the town led to the mural festival led to us coming and painting this lamplighter which represents <laughs> like who she is and yeah. in the community and yeah. so i mean it was such a beautiful moment like, yeah ashley and i are two boys sitting with this woman at her cafe on this beach in mexico eating fish tacos and she's telling us this story and I'm just it's moments like that um that really capture why I love travel they light you up they light me <laughs> yeah simply put but I just I, I don't know that when you travel you open yourself up to those experiences yeah and those surprises and I'm just you know I've always been one to just jump into new experiences that's great you know and I'm glad that you that was such a great segue because my next question was going to be, um, you know, talking a little bit about your work on the historical side of things because, you know, and I don't, you know, I, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but up until the lamplighter, it seemed like you were really exploring different crafts and different characters quite a bit. You know, there's yeah. So the the lamplighter was an offshoot of my main body of work, which is called the Jobs of Yesteryear. Yeah, and so. You know, eventually in my in my painting life, I realized I need to focus on one idea and kind of find a theme that I could really explore and, and get into deep. And I've always loved history. I love, I still do. I love reading about history, and it's just a fascination of mine. Mm -hmm. And so, um, at the same time as, as cultivating that love of history, I've been drawing this really long limbed character in my sketchbooks, and I just mm -hmm. loved it. And I was having so much fun with it. This is kind of an example here. These are, yeah, these yeah. are like my latest paintings. Um, 
And so eventually I found a way to combine the history with uh, the surreal kind of Long Lind character. Yeah, and I think in your bio you put like a Dali-esque. I think you use that term, don't you? Yeah, Dali was a big influence. I mean, his painting, um, The Temptation of St. Anthony with the the tall animals approaching the guy mm-hmm. holding the cross up, like that painting continues to amaze me. Um, and that kind of was a, that was an impetus for me to try this style. Mm-hmm. Tim Burton even, you know, he's kind of plays with that aesthetic yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a famous sculptor, uh, Giacometti, that has these really long kind of smudgy brown sculptures that there's something about that style that speaks to me. I don't know what it is, but I've, taken that style and combined it with my love of history and especially my love of um of celebrating everyday people of the past and and just everyday workers i think they deserve just as much recognition as the famous characters of the past and the the famous people so in my paintings i I depict these workers and and show them doing their thing so let's let's say that the lamplighter has you know first place in your artistic Art, eye, mind's eye, however you say that. Yeah. Um, is there a, a secondary character or even like maybe a third character that almost made it to that top spot that you... Well, I think what the Lamplighter has is that it so easily represents that symbolism of what I love and that deeper meaning to it. But um, I've always been drawn to, to farmers, okay. and farm workers. And I think part of that's my upbringing in rural South Dakota is that that's what I was surrounded by. Mm-hmm. You know, I was surrounded by um, just hardworking families that for generations have just been working the land. And I think there's a humbleness to that that I always uh, appreciate. Um, so the farming theme, and and I, I recently did one of a, a sower, like when they used to sow the seeds. Oh, sure. By hand, they just kind of knapsack and they just be out in the field sowing seeds. Mm-hmm. And so I really love that one because it also has some of that symbolism. You could read into that a bit mm-hmm. um, as as to how you live. Um, and then a third, you know, I love the the lumber industry, and so I've done a lot with like mm-hmm. the the crosscut sawyers, the lumberjacks, mm-hmm. um, the log drivers. You know, the river rats they called them that would ride those logs down the rivers and and bring them to the mill. And um, your your mural at South Haven and Baseline kind of speaks to all those things in a way. Yeah, we've got, I mean, South Haven in this area we live in right now, it's like it used to be, yeah, timber industry kind of moved in. Then once the trees were cleared, it was farming. And so, yeah, it's got both of those aspects. Um, And then moved into the tourism Mm -hmm. industry and and more of the service industry. So, yeah, manufacturing too. One of the things that I I really liked was when I was looking through your job series was how you were, um, comparing the technologies, you know, you'd focus on the person, kind of the old school person, but then you'd also kind of hide in there the technology that replaced them. Yeah, so um, the first painting I ever did was a lamplighter in the series. It was, oh, uh, that was the first one. So the very the first, okay. yeah. Oh. And so that's part of why it's special to me. Okay, okay. I mean, now this is, I, I painted the lamplighter probably, gosh, 10 years ago or so. Yeah. About ten years ago, and um, it was a a lamplighter on a tall bike. You know, I, I learned that lamplighters would build these tall mm-hmm. bikes to ride from lamp to lamp. I thought that was so cool because I love bikes. It is cool. Um, but I was finishing the painting, and I, I kind of had this lamplighter in the foreground, you know, lighting this lamp. I had these two kind of buildings framing him a bit in the background, and then between the two buildings, I had this space and. You know, I, I wanted to just create the sense of distance to kind of draw the viewer in a little more. And I thought, God, how can I do that? You know, and I was working through different ideas. And then I thought of, of power lines and how oh. those trailing into the distance really, you know, serve that effect. Um, but I, th- I thought, oh, but that wouldn't be like appropriate for the time that they were lighting lamps because he was lighting lamps because they didn't have electricity yet. And then it clicked, and I'm like, oh my god, that's why we don't have lamp lighters. Uh, yeah. I'm going to put that in there and show this progression in this subtle way. And so ever since that moment, I mean, I don't really, uh, being a painter and a creative, I feel like these ideas just kind of come to me. I don't claim that I came up with that on my own. It was just kind of given to me, and it's up to me to paint it. And so since that moment, you know, I'm 150 paintings now into this series. You know, these are, worth of 10 years. 
Yeah, yeah. And in, in the last like four years, I guess we've, we've had our business like full time. Uh, six years I've been painting, so yeah. And and every single painting has that little detail. Yeah. That you can find. Um, you know, like an easy example, you've got the newsboy here hawking his newspapers, and then once we figured out the newspaper vending machine, it was much more cost yeah. effective for the newspapers to do that. So it, it more or less replaced the newsboy. So every painting will have that progression in some way. So the, the 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 thing that you just said, the ideas come to you, you know, this you know, it's a pretty I don't know, well well explored idea about the muse. Is that what you'd call it as well? Well, a- Ashley's my muse. Okay. For sure. She okay. um wears so many hats, I mean even from the beginning, like she helped kind of formulate this this idea of the jobs of yesteryear, and and she's got a great business mind, so she helped us make it a business and make it viable. Um, and then she's also just got a good knack for design and, and visuals, so she's my bouncing ideas off of her. She's you know direct enough where she can tell me if it's a lousy idea (laughs) or if she says it's good i know she means it she's not just blowing smoke um so she is like uh i say a lot of like these are our paintings because it feels so much like that we create this whole life together and um so she's absolutely the muse okay yeah okay um it's beautiful yeah so where do you feel like um the the actual mind's eye comes into play then you know where you're seeing an image in your in your mind or it's um where i see it is where i where i say they're kind of given to me is that in our travels and just talking to people in the books i read um the yeah internet searches whatever you know it's different ways that these ideas for paintings come to me and so it's it's my job to be open to them and to continually like be present enough to realize when an idea is kind of given to me or, or presented and to remember it and and then to spend the time in the studio to make it happen so I think that's a, another reason I love travel is it's just new experiences new sites that can be so inspirational mm-hmm. um, new stories to gather but I'm really, I love storytelling. I mean, that's part of what my paintings do is they tell a story. Mm-hmm. And so I I love talking with people and hearing their story about their work life or their family's work life and, and, and the workers that mean something to them. And that's often where I get a lot of my ideas from. In talking with the people and kind of hearing stories about their grandparents or whatnot. And- yeah, like there's a woman um, that uh, I met at a festival and her... Her grandmother was a tobacco sewer. Oh, okay. Would sew sure. like tobacco leaves together. Mm-hmm. I need to research it more to fully understand the function oh, of it. Not the sewing of the seeds, the sewing of the finished product. The the they would sew tobacco leaves together. Okay. From what I understand, for different purposes. Um, Don't tell me sailing across the Atlantic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can go in any <laughs> fantastic yeah. directions yeah. that, but no, I um, and a lot of my commissions that I get are, are uh, from people that have connections to different industries. You know, I I did a uh, there's a fellow in Michigan that I did a um, a painting of firemen, like the old school firemen with the hand pumps and, and yeah. the buckets, and his family comes from a long line of firemen. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's just I love. In the end, like I, I'm a, I love connecting to people, mm-hmm. and that's part of why I love these stories. I connect to people from the past. They also allow me to connect to people in the present because they have different ways that they uh, find meaning in these stories. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, the the chance to talk with people and connect with them around this theme, it's just a tool for me to connect and share in the in the joy of life with people. You think we'll ever see a. Uh, a book with these characters come out of the Voorhees studio? I, I think so. I It's been on my list for a long time. Yeah. I mean, part of that is that if we do something, we want to do it right, and we know that doing a book is a whole new thing, and it'll happen at some point, because mm-hmm. these stories, like in a book form, it would be so much fun to write. Yeah. And, 
and to see them all together and yeah, I think it would be pretty impactful. And you've already got your main character. Yeah, I mean, so, that, I can see the cover already. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you? Can you hear? Actually, hear um, any of your characters' voices? Do you ever kind of like? You know, what if what, what would the newsboy sound like? What would the, you know what I mean? Oh, gosh, that's a good question. Um, I don't say they do like sound. I mean, I've had people approach me about doing animations and videos. And as I think about that idea, you know, I like the mystery of my characters. And it's kind of, I, I rarely paint the eyes. You know, oh, I like to. Who would have noticed it? Yeah, I kind of leave them shadowed and suggestive, and I, I like to have them this kind of uh, lack of identity to that degree. Mm. And I think the voice would, again, like, give away too much. Mm -hmm. Like, I've had experiences, like, where I see a character I've seen in books or I've seen in art, and then they do animation, and I'm like, oh, that's not the voice I would have <laughs> picked. You know, that's weird. It changes yeah. it for me. And so I think that, I don't know, I think if it was an animation, it would almost be like a silent character. Oh, okay. I wonder sure. if it would just be this kind of, yeah, that, that, that's how I would imagine it right now. But. And that way other people can make their own voices. Oh, so you're back to the book. And I'm back to the, yeah. the connectivity of it. People can connect to it because it's it's left open for them mm -hmm. to, to kind of insert their own, um, their own identity into it. You know, it's interesting now that you say that. I feel like that what you're describing happened to me more as a child than as an adult. You know, as a child, I'd read the book, comic book, mm -hmm. a lot of times, and then the, the movie would come out, and I was like, no, 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 <laughs> none of this is right. You guys didn't get it right at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like they, and, and you know, that's just the way they saw it, and you saw it a different way, and I yeah. think that, um, yeah. I, I think that that could happen with, with these characters, too. Yeah, I would have never access that memory had you not brought it up because as an adult now I feel like I'm more kind of like oh you know whatever this is their interpretation but yeah as a kid I was much more like disenchanted I was like what's what you guys doing here <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spider-Man doesn't sound like yeah, that or... completely botched yeah and why are you focusing on this part of the story when this other part's way more interesting <laughs> yeah I think uh the one the one voice that nailed it was Michael Keaton with Batman. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. You know, that's that's one that I'm like, yeah, that's kind of how I imagined it. So Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> I would agree. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so they got that one right, for sure. Nailed it. So it could happen, but it's, it's a big risk. And, and I uh, I like the mystery of it. I like the mystery of the art and allowing enough space for the viewer to become part of it, for sure. So maybe if we could kind of go back to, I think you were in Boulder. Colorado, and yep. that's when you decided to make the shift from kind of making it work to being a full-time professional artist. Yeah, so right? what was that like in your mind? You know, like if the, if you could talk to yourself back then and give yourself advice or whatnot, as somebody that's like, I want to do this leap, I'm not sure, I'm, I mean, eh. mm -hmm. what would you? Um, Don't sweat the small stuff, you know, uh, I was... So we moved back from Germany um, to Colorado, and you know we were two years in, in Europe. Um, the second half of that, Ashley and I were both in Munich, so we, you know, she finished her contract, oh. moved to Munich, so we we're together, and that was magical. Um, and then we moved back to Colorado. We got married and uh, had our first child. And all the while, I've still been painting, sketching like crazy. Just I love art, and mm -hmm. I love creating. I love that act, and and bringing something new into the world is just fun. The process of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the exploratory part. I'm just like, what's gonna happen the other day when I'm when I set aside this set aside this time to make something? <laughs> you know, it's just this adventure in a way in in my mind. And and um, back then especially, you know, I had no I didn't have a series I was focusing on. I'm just trying all this stuff, which I think is so much fun and, and a great idea when you're first starting out. It's just try everything, see what sticks. Um, so we're in, we're in Boulder, um, but of course we have to get jobs. You know, I'm not painting for a living at that point. Mm -hmm. um, my wife started working graphic design for a restaurant group, kind of uh, flexing her design muscles and, and learning more about that. Um, I, in the, mean, in the meantime, got a serving job. I was like, you know, a waiter. Um, and then eventually got my teaching degree. And so I was teaching second and third grade um, for a couple of years. And again, on the whole time, you know, painting, 
um, and building up my skills and my, my experiences. Um, and then really what set us on the course to quit our jobs and, and do this full time was, was our firstborn, our, our son, Ivan. Um, we quickly realized, you know, we have, a, we have this child, this incredible being, like we want to see every little moment, you know, we just want to like, wow, we we're so amazed. And um, what we found ourselves worked into is that we're both working our butts off to afford daycare so that he can spend his whole day with the daycare provider. And, <laughs> and then we get home at night and we, we're just like exhausted. And, you know, it was just this, the rat race. Mm -hmm. And we realized like, that's not for us. And what else can we do to like break this, this cycle? And so uh, during my summers off from teaching, we'd started visiting some of these festivals and kind of exploring this idea of doing art festivals to generate income from the art. Mm -hmm. And we did our first one and it was, um, uh, it was like a, the most rickety um, pop-up tent you can imagine, like with a, a weird forest green top. We had chains hanging from it with a piece of particle board uh, hanging from the chains with some paintings hanging from that. I mean, the things were blowing in the wind. <laughs> we had made t-shirts and thinking that was a good idea. And and so the whole thing was just kind of moving and shaking. And we, I remember we stepped back. We're like, it looks pretty good. <laughs> and so, you know, this is in Estes Park, Colorado. Like, oh, beautiful, yeah. beautiful setting. Um, and we had a, a what we thought was a great show. You know, we sold like six hundred dollars of art, which we were like, "Woohoo! This is incredible!" Yeah, it's buying dinner. Um, we we ended up meeting this this woman um, and her her and her husband that we continue to stay in touch with to this day, and she's just been this like angel in our lives. Oh, that's great. This, yeah, and so I mean, I totally knew we were supposed to be there and had a great experience, but. Um, yeah, we just we tasted that and see uh, we had seen that there's opportunity there. Like we can make generate mm -hmm. some income, um, and got the idea to you know let's let's buy a camper, let's quit our jobs, let's go on the road with our, our son, and let's just live on the road and go to art festivals and sell art and just be art vagabonds. And it was the most magical nine months uh, of my life. It was I mean one of the most magical times. It was incredible. Newborn, camper, art fair, painting. <laughs> well, he was he was about two by that point. Okay. Because we had to, you know there were some steps. Like I had to finish out my my contract, and and um, we wanted to do it right. There was definitely a temptation, like let's just quit everything. <laughs> yeah. We're going, yeah. but we had to do it right, and that's another lesson we've learned: is to be patient. You know, do it the right way. Mm -hmm. And so we, um, you know, we had to get the the camper kind of configured and. How do we transport the art and um you know how's it gonna work and, and where's our stuff go and so we rented a storage unit put all that in there and then went on the road and i think yeah if i could speak to myself back then it would just be just don't worry like enjoy this adventure what an opportunity um but you know to be honest i would i had my doubts and i know ashley did too and um she was she had the vision more and that's kind of her role she's got this great like long-term vision she can see where it can lead i'm much more the day-to-day -day, like take care of things you know that need to get done the painter or the actual yeah uh, crafts person yeah like i have yeah. to get these paint i have to build the work and um i was such a careful painter back then too i was so tight and so like mm. every little thing had to be perfect i'm taping every line and i'm you know, really stressing about it. And so I think I would also just, in general, like, loosen up, mm -hmm. stay loose. And mm -hmm. and to this day, that's my mantra in the studio. And when I paint a mural, it's just like, stay loose. Like, I tell myself that, like, just stay loose, don't sweat. Like, Are you a golfer by any chance? Yeah, I am. I it translates golf. there too. You can't, you, you, you can't have this grip on there and expect to. Yeah, I remember somebody telling me you, you hold it like you'd hold a bird. Yeah. Like a live bird. And I, and I think about that often too, because yeah, you can't choke it. And... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's so many, so many metaphors in life for that, right? You know, I, I mean, on and on and on and on and on. The whole like, take it easy, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. come what may, yeah. this 
two shall pass. There's so many different versions of that that are, are so true. Yeah. Um, and it's funny how easily we sink back into that, like worrying mm-hmm. about the day to day. And I do that too, but it's just, you know, it's, it's a process and it's a, a way to continually grow. Mm-hmm. Um, especially with kids, you know, there's a whole nother layer of things to worry about, but in the end, like it'll work out somehow. So you mind if I tell you a quick story? I, I your love your stories. Yeah. Okay. So I was doing this sculpture for Halloween at, at Oxbow there. I saw it. And thank you. Mm. And incredible. And um, while I was doing it, there was it's on a public trail, as you know, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of people walking by and they'd ask me what it is. And I'm like, well, I'm not really sure. You know, I'm, I'm building it right now. You know, I've got the materials assembled, but I don't really know what it's going to turn into. Yeah. And that's not what I'd say to him. I'd just say, I don't know. You'll have to come back and see. I'm not really sure either. Yeah. And it always, it, no, nobody just took that at face value. Like none of them were just like, oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. You know, of course you don't know what you're building. You just learn. Yeah. They were all just like, well, I'm excited to see what it turns into. And I'd say, well, yeah, me too. And, <laughs> you know, you had kind of, I think, alluded to that earlier on where, when you start, you're not exactly sure where you're going. Mm-hmm. Is that accurate? Yeah, I think that um, they were probably disappointed. They wanted a concrete thing yeah. right, that they could envision. And, and I think that's the, the beauty and wonder of art is it's so um, it's so ungrounded in, in any sort of, you know, it, the fact that you can't say what good art is with any divinity, you know, it's just that it's all so subjective it's it's and that's why it's so um experiential is because the way you like it is totally different from someone else who might not like it and that's what i like it's this mystery and it's this um uh, this uh fluid thing and i experienced that while i'm making it it um depends on the painting i usually have a general idea of the direction i'm going into you know, I'll kind of lay out the general composition. Like I know I'm going to have, you know, this this worker in the foreground and, and this sort of general uh, stance. And then I think about the background, but it's when I, I like to leave enough room to, to discover new things. And a lot of that's with, you know, paint strokes and technique and colors that make sense and, and tones. And um, so that's kind of the discovery that I have with this series is there's always something unexpected that happens and it's just, it's awesome. Um, I remember I was painting, my uncle um, had commissioned me to, to do a painting and he just kind of left it open. He's like, just paint me something like a serene scene or something. So I, I had this uh, little peninsula of land coming out into this uh, lake and this tree kind of sprouting up on this little kind of point of land. And yeah, and then um, as I was painting, it was, it was watercolor, and I, I was painting the whole thing and, and working the, this gradient in the sky from like you know, dark to light on the horizon. And I, I accidentally dripped one drop of water into the sky accidentally, and I, and I you know, mopped it up quickly, but it left this perfect little moon, you know, or sun, oh, depending sure. on how you see it in the sky and there's just this beautiful like mistake and I, I continue to see things like that happen like I'll accidentally you know uh, I'll do something that I had planned on doing but then I'm like oh my gosh that actually works out it's that's part of like that ideas and things just coming through me and I'm just kind of a vehicle for it you know when I'm painting I'm just like in this zone and, and time melts away and it's just this called the flow zone mm-hmm. yeah you know, it's just kind of flowing through me and i i i just like love that feeling mm-hmm. and then the next day i'll kind of go back and be like oh yeah what that happened? <laughs> I don't even know. like at the end of the day i usually just i don't look at it i don't analyze it because I'm, I'm at that point I've, I've just i've been into it so much that i'm not in a good headspace to make any judgment call on it mm-hmm. so i'll set the paintbrushes down you know go inside and then the next day i come out with fresh eyes and Oh yeah, you know, and I can appreciate what happened. Do you have a, a, a routine around uh, ensuring that you're, you know, because you're describing yourself as a conduit almost for like an external energy that's that's filtered through you and onto the canvas is kind of the yeah picture I get anyway. Is there any 
Is there anything that you're consciously doing that it, it allows you to be that, trans, you know, the unfiltered energy conduit, I guess is lack of a better word? Yeah, well, I think uh, what can get in the way of that is distractions of different types. Um, I, I try to hold myself to like a no social media in the studio, um, which I've broken that plenty of times to know why that rule is important. Oh, well said. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I try to keep that out because that's just extra noise and extra thoughts. Um, there's always other things to do and I try to really like block out my time. Like, yes, I've got to call the dentist or whatever, but I'm going to do that at the end of the day or you know, not during this time. I try to keep that time sacred. Um, How much time do you spend it at, 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 in a sitting? Do you have as usual? much as I can, but as much as you can. it's typically like a typical day. You know, I, I take the kids to school um, and I typically get about six hours or so. With a break or just straight? I, I'll take a break for lunch, yeah. yeah. And if I'm really into the painting, you know, it's, it's come inside, make something quick, kind of eat it while I'm <laughs> looking at the painting and thinking about what's next. Yeah. Um, what You're else? hustling a little bit while still holding the bird. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just yeah. like balance, this delicate balance yeah. to it. But um, I definitely, you know, and, and I'll often go in at night too. If I'm really into it, I'll go back in after the kids are in, in bed and uh, go, go spend some time there. Um, what helps me keep me in that zone is music. Um, music during while I paint is great. Um, and then if I'm not in the mood for that, I'll listen to podcasts, podcasts hey. or uh, books on tape. Okay. So yeah, just like having something to kind of uh, uh, help with the flow can help. You know, I, I'm not a paint and silence kind of guy. I like to have, especially like if I'm like when I start a mural. You know, I really got to kind of build up my courage to, like, put something on that wall to start. And so I'll listen to, like, you know, hip-hop or, like, hard rock or something, you know, to really, like, get some adrenaline flowing mm -hmm. and and just allow me to just throw the, the doubts and the, the caution to the wind and just go for it. So I was watching that video you posted of the actual creation of that um, mural in Mexico, and I was really impressed about your, you know, your pull brush was... It was dialed in. Thank you. Yeah, man, <laughs> you really got that. That was funny because, you know, in Mexico, there's such a, a scarcity of resources. And I, and I love how resourceful they are in general. And I'm, I'm that way. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, they didn't really have a ladder that I could use. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, they, so it's, we're on top of a laundromat. This is the setting. So I'm, I'm on the roof of a laundromat. There's all these laundry lines where the woman who does it, she... She literally like takes these, uh, these uh, laundry baskets of wet laundry, and she climbs up this rickety ladder, like just a, a an extension ladder that's just leaned against the building. One of the legs is kind of rotted out on the bottom. You know, it's pretty shaky, and she's just like hustling up this thing, hanging laundry all day. <laughs> and so I'm up there, and I was, you know, there were some moments where I had to ask her if I could use the ladder, but it also takes away her access to the roof. So I wanted to be mindful of that. Um, and so when I started to sketch it, I didn't have any way to like sketch up there. And it's actually better if you can stand back, you know, it's, it's easier oh. without a ladder to have like a longer pull so you can kind of see more from afar what you're doing. And oh. so what I ended up doing is I, I found a long stick and uh, some twine and I just tied a paintbrush on the end of that sucker <laughs> and just like, you know, and dip it into the can from afar and then just like go for it. And I, it was so much fun. Um, <laughs> you did a great job. Too. Oh man, it worked out well. Um, and that's part of what I love about murals you know, compared to the studio work is there's such a physicality to it. You know, I love working and, and um, you know, I do like this kind of work. But if I can get out there in, in the outdoors and in the setting and, and do some big, you know, big gestural movements, it's just so much fun. Yeah, there was a lot of movement in the finished product. I'll post a picture of it, but he's, he's in full stride, you know. Yeah, yeah, like, kind of bringing that light. Um, I couldn't really and, tell how long the, it's not wingspan, like span would be. I mean, it looked like it could have been 30 feet, though. Yeah, feet I think minutes. the whole wall is about 40 feet. And so, yeah, he's probably 35, 30. Um, and with the murals, I got to point out, like, 
Ashley and I, we, we've started collaborating on art. And so with all the murals we've done, we collaborate. And we, it's definitely 50-50. Um, that one in, in particular, it was really our first. We, we sat down together. We developed the whole idea together. And so she gets just as much credit as I get for that one. That's, yeah. yeah, well said. Of yeah. 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 We should have had her. The next time we'll have her here. So yeah, she would, she'd she have some things to say. <laughs> <laughs> Although That's she, what we're looking for. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she likes to put me out there. She's not a, a, as keen on the interviews. And the, mm-hmm. You know, she's a little more kind of reserved in that aspect. And, and so I've always kind of filled that role. I'm, I'm a little more extroverted, and she's, she likes to be in the, in the background. But mm-hmm. she also gets the credit where it's deserved. Yeah, well, there's a lot of dualities in life, you know, and mm-hmm. that's two extroverts. Sometimes can be a little, <laughs> yeah, it's a little loud. Yeah. It can get a little loud, yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, I find that balance in our in what we do as well. There's a, a seasonality to it because now, you know, what we mainly do is is um, in the winter months, like right now, I'm, I'm in the studio just creating work, uh, and then in the summer, kind of spring into fall, that block of time, that's when we're out on the road and we're going to festivals and we're setting up the tent. And that's when I'm just kind of like on, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm full extrovert, whereas this time is more of a time to be like in the studio and, and my recharge time. Isn't Michigan beautiful for that? I love it here. Man. Yeah. I love it. It's, yeah. I love the seasons and uh, especially this area, you know, it's so fun in the summer and there's such an energy because I, there's so many people here and we're all going to the beach mm-hmm. and we're all outside. Softball. Yeah. Playing softball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, just out, and then the winter, it just like whew, everything just quiets down. And you know, I go to the beach, and I'm all alone out there. And I go out in the woods, and it's just me in the woods and and uh, the snow. And yeah, man, I, it's a place for us. And you can think, and it's yeah, you just take a breath. And yeah, just like have some some perspective on what just happened. Because <laughs> yeah, our our summers are such a whirlwind, and we love that. We love the traveling. We we go all over the country. I mean, we go to California and Oregon and, and down south, and and uh, so it's it's a hustle and it's a haul, but we love that and we love the counterbalance of the quiet winter time mm-hmm. and just being home. So there was there was something that you just mentioned a little bit ago that I wanted to kind of just focus on a little bit more. I think we're getting right about to time, but um, it's it's the practice of saying no as an artist oh I think, yeah i think that that's got to be a skill you have to can you talk more about the progression of that like at what point did you realize you know social media wasn't good for you for creation and doing stuff you know because it's it's you know a lot of people call it the resistance mm-hmm. you know fighting that resistance and it's so easy to sweep the floor or shovel snow instead of yeah and i you know, I continually fall prey to that. I, um, the way, what I've realized about it is that, you know, it, it takes, it takes a certain amount of just, you know, it takes some courage to create something. You've got to, you've got to just, you know, it's to get over that hump of just starting. And so I will find that, yeah, I'm often like, oh, I've got to, yeah, sweep the sidewalk. Or I've got to do all these little menial tasks before I start creating. And I've, I've learned that if I really want to be productive, I've got to just hold myself accountable. And, you know, Ashley helps with that too. And I talk to her about it so that I do hold myself accountable more to just, you know, when it's my painting day, I go in there and I, I often, you know, I'll look at the clock in the morning and I'll be like, all right, I need to get paint on the panel by nine o'clock, you know, and I really try to hold myself to that. And so part of that is, yeah, self-control and discipline. And being a fan of history, I look back at the, a lot of the most successful people, whether it's in the arts or not, and what often sets them apart is discipline, self-discipline over time. And so I, I just, I know the importance of that. And, you know, with that said, I still fall prey to it. And I think that that's just human nature. So. I just try to do my best and, and continually just being aware of what I'm doing and to, to hold myself accountable. Um, but you saying, you know, the, the ability to say no, you know, that's another aspect of, of um, 
of staying on, on task is, is I think creatives in general, we have a lot of ideas, right? right? We have a lot of different things that we could do. And so uh, it's important to kind of make a goal. You know, our goal is to build this art business. How do we get to that? Well, we have to build a body of work. And so do all these other ideas feed into that or do they distract from that? And so I, I really have become better at, at saying no to projects that don't feed into like what we do and what I do as an artist and, and to not go off on too many sidetrack tangents. But, you know, there is value to exploring new territory. And so, of course, it's a, it's a balance. Um, do you have like a backlog of ideas then? Do you kind of have like an idea board that you're like, eh, maybe next year I'll just do it. Do you do that or is it just kind of like, Oh, yeah. 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 I, yeah. I, people often wonder, like, do we run out of ideas? And I <laughs> I have not. Yeah. Thank God. I, I just, I have so many things that if I had all the time in the world, I could create. I, I don't know. There's a lot of things that I want to explore and, and things that will happen. But um, again, we just learn to be patient and to not force it and to... Um, you know, looking back, the timing always comes around. Like the, the timing will be right at some point. But if it's not right then, you just kind of let it go and mm-hmm. know that eventually it will be will be right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm, I'm a, I get this from my mom, I'm a people pleaser. And so I have a hard time saying no when someone's like, hey, would you create this poster for our event, you know? And I'm just like, oh, I want to help you so bad. and Or, oh, can, you know, I, I want to give this to my husband for his birthday. And it's like, you know, uh, beautiful mountain scene you know nothing to do with my workers theme mm-hmm. or anything like that i've just uh i've had to learn to to uh graciously you know say no in those times or you know if it is right then, then i'll make it happen does does that how did how did that play i know that so i don't know that it's easier to say no when you've reached success or you know when you're cash flowing <laughs> yeah but in those earlier days you know, was was it much more difficult, or do you think that that's in part how you became so successful in, in a sense? In the beginning, I did say no. I would, uh, especially before we started doing it full time, I was taking any paying gig that would allow me to paint for money. Mm-hmm. And so I did commissions. I did, you know, uh, just the whole gamut. I did, you know, this um, uh, blossoming cherry tree to honor. Uh, my wife's aunt, you know, our aunt's uh, defeating breast cancer. I did, um, I tried to do some portraiture, which I'm terrible at. I'm really <laughs> not good at that. Um, I did like this old farmhouse watercolor that turned out really well. I mean, especially early on, it's okay to take all, you know, to, to, to gain that experience, to get some money coming into the business, to see feel out that business side of it because um, you have a lot to learn there too. And I learned something from each painting as well. <laughs> you you get in there. You come, sit on yeah, come, on, come on in here. We're almost done. You want to come say hi to everybody? Dad, there's a spider on the ceiling. Okay, we'll, we'll take care of that in a bit. <laughs> you want to say hi to everybody? Hi. So this is Oren, uh, our second son. He's, um, he's five years old. So we have the two boys. Um, and yeah, they're a big part of, of what we do and why we do it. And um, Oren is an artist in his own right. What are you working on, Oren? Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs? Are you sculpting them or drawing them? or? I'm, I'm like drawing them and then cutting them out. Okay. Then I cut them out. Okay. Yeah, that's another, I didn't mention that about the paintings. All the people in the paintings are made out of paper. Oh, yeah, I guess that is. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's yeah. Nice you... So uh, technically, I'm a mixed media artist. I I paint on wood. These are wood panels, and um, like this brown tone. That's the wood grain. It's it's stained, but I let it be part of the oh, the composition. Okay. Yeah. And then the uh, yeah the figures are all made out of uh, torn bits of paper. Uh, this collage process that I've I've kind of uh, figured out, mm-hmm. and then yep, we use glue, and then we after I paint them, then I fix them to the wood panel and, and seal it all up. So yeah, the, the worker is really going to be the, the focal point because of that process. Oh. It's a subtle effect, but it literally makes them jump out to the viewer in a way. Yeah, you're... yeah. And you're doing, are you working on a similar process then, Oren? 
Yeah, I'm, work, I'm working on a, like a long painting. Okay. Is there a dinosaur in particular that you're focusing on? No. No, just whatever dinosaur happens to be closest? Yeah. Okay. Do you have a favorite dinosaur? Yeah. What is its name? T-Rex. Oh, the big one, huh? Yeah. All it's right. ferocious. Okay. But yeah, I mean, we... I we, like the ankylosaur when I was a kid. Oh, that with the big nice. club? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like spiky size, like a turtle kind of. But yeah, I was a big uh, Triceratops guy. Oh yeah, another first. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Classic. Yeah, I mean, there's so many great ones. And yeah. Well, you want to wave goodbye to everybody? No. Okay. Well, what if your dad and I wave goodbye and you just help me now? Yeah, you can move my arm. Bye everybody. Bye. Say goodbye. <laughs> 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 oh, this is great. Yeah, it's easy, you know? Oh, yeah. Just talking. Yeah.